you're with the Breaker Leggers. And we're in London's West End at the Ambassadors Theatre to see the new play, Beginning. So stay tuned to find out how many legs, whether it's break a leg or leg it. <laughs> We're always looking to bring you the latest news and shows from London's West End and regional theatres up and down the country. So if you want to find out what's happening in your hometown or right here in London town, hit subscribe now. And make sure you comment on the theatre you are seeing on this show. We've had some lovely comments from our dedicated fans, Marquis, Ben Vick and um, some other people. Yeah, Thank you're all great. Thank you so much. We're overwhelmed trying to keep up with you all. So this play beginning here at the Ambassadors Theatre now. The Ambassadors, there's been something here before. Yeah, for quite I don't know a while. if anyone noticed it, but it was sort of like clogging up one of the houses for uh, maybe like decades. Stomp was here. But hey, it was obviously doing very well. Yes. It's been here for so long. Yes, but now that's moved out. It's given rice and um, a home for a bit of new blood, which is quite nice. And it's given us an excuse to see inside this theatre, which I've never done before. It's meant to be quite intimate, yeah. um, which suits this piece quite well because this piece, beginning, started off in the door space at the National Theatre which is also a lovely intimate v um, venue. Yeah it had a little run there but now it's transferred to London's West End for another limited run and we feel very lucky to be catching it. The writer is David Eldridge and um, David's written Market Boy in Basildon Under the Blue Sky and the director is... The director is Polly Findlay. Now I know Polly Findlay um, one thing I recognise from her credits is she did Treasure Island at the National Theatre, which was a big production yeah. in the Olivier space. Massive production, huge family show. Um, she was also has an Olivier Award, which she won for directing Darren Brown's show, Sven Gali, Best Entertainment that year. Brilliant. This yeah. piece is a two-hander, um, one act one hour and 50 minutes straight through. Yep, so we won't be catching you at the interval, but we will be catching you at the end. So we have come to the end of beginning here at the Ambassador's Theatre. It feels a bit like a bit of a sort of juxtaposition-y <laughs> thing, doesn't the it? End that, of the beginning. end of beginning. So what did you make of that? I loved it. I felt like it was timely. I felt like it was current and relevant and modern. It was all about anxiety and an expectation. And I think it was really relatable. Um, you know, it, it, the couple that were portrayed in this, I think, have elements of, of every every relationship and certainly the beginning of every relationship and the awkwardness of it. How about you? Yes. I, I, th I felt as if it covered so many issues. Um, it's all about relationships, I think, about the vulnerability of humans entering into a relationship, which if you consider you're giving so much of yourself and that takes so much risk as a person to give your, I think she says at one point, give your heart to someone yeah. and the potential for it to be dashed and yeah. bruised and you're meeting these people who have been on journeys and have baggage and in this one setup, I, I mean in terms of a plot, all you want them to do is to get together. That's set up very quickly, very early on and yet there's so much stopping them and yeah. that is the play. But what is stopping them are the, themselves. But but are the issues that are in reality no different than any other relationship that's ever began. Um, you know, in so much as a romantic relationship, but also about friendship and family and the anxieties that you have about living up to people's expectations and actually fulfilling what they want of you and what you want of yourself and it's a huge amount of pressure it's actually made me kind of grateful for, for our relationship in a lot of ways and the fact that we have overcome a lot of those sort of when you're in the beginning of things there are a lot of things stopping you the baggage that you bring and the experiences you've had and to put those to one side and to jump in is a huge leap of faith and, and that's what it's about yeah and it's a very very well observed piece. Um, it had a bit of a remnants for me of almost like the Anna Baker, Annie Baker kind of style in terms of the flip. Ultra realism. Ultra realism. It was a lot in what wasn't said. Um, very well observed conversation. It, how things were misinterpreted and trying to understand each other and just the awkwardness of 
when that happens and misjudging what what each other is saying like yeah. just really well observed in its direction that's it i think that it is in there in there in the text but i think polly finlay has done an amazing job in the direction of probably mm. that it was so recognizable it's set at the end of a house party and it was set in a situation that is like a situation that everyone has come across at some point but i think polly's brought a lot to the table here of her own observations and gone out of her way to put herself in that situation and to just observe and i i felt that translated really well for very clever direction yeah because i think um and I don't want to um, stereotype here, but an amateur could try to rush through it and try and keep it pacey and whatever. But it was perfectly paced. It yeah. wasn't like, come on, we need to push through. We need to the keep it going. The pitch was just right. It was pitched just right. Perfectly natural. Um, it was as much in the reactions as it was in the action to each other. Absolutely. I felt as if I knew these people. Yeah, and and coming on to those kind of the actors that were portraying the roles of Laura and. Danny. Um, Laura Justine Mitchell, how did you find her? I thought she was brilliant in the early stages when they're kind of being really quirky and funny with each other and trying to make each other laugh. Breaking the ice really. Breaking the ice but it doesn't quite land and but you know you kind of do things when you're in that environment when you feel for someone to try and make them laugh and but it kind of falls flat and then you feel a bit stupid and all those kind of avenues that were explored she did beautifully and then when it got to those real serious moments laying her heart bare you know I was there I was with her the whole time I thought she was fantastic the joy of her performance for me was it <laughs> It's almost a, a, a very tricky situation to be asked to play a character that isn't isn't extreme, really. You know, it isn't a character that it's naturally it's totally realistic. You're, you're being asked to play a non-character almost, and that's not to say that she was underdeveloped, not at all. But an absolute, just somebody that, that didn't particularly have any quirks or anything that was out of the norm and to say to an actress just play this situation as a normal situation you're a normal person you're this that's an, a massive skill I almost feel like I'd be I'd be more comfortable personally playing like a hunchback and that was you know <laughs> did you know someone that I could really get into character for and make my own if somebody said yeah. play yourself I'd struggle with that and I felt like she was playing an everybody which was a skill yes what she had was absolute drives mm -hmm. I felt as if um, they were playing a game of give and take one person wanted something and the other person wasn't taking it and it was a constant battle between them Sam Troughton as Danny. What did you think of him? I, I gotta say, for, for me, he just pipped it with regards to best performance. Um, he played this. Uh, it, it, do you know what's really difficult? And this is often said it's really difficult to play a drunk. Yes, he's drunk throughout. And, uh, but, yes. But, but totally believably drunk it's so easy to find to tip over the edge with drunkenness into becoming comical yeah. and farcical yeah. but he never did that it was just believability from the off uh, you know in a, in a I'm trying too hard oh, I'm going to act the goon and then I'm going to be a come emotional and then I'm going to think oh what an idiot I've said this sort of do you know what I've been that drunk and I am that person when I'm <laughs> drunk and that's the thing that there's, there's, there's playing drunk and being drunk and I think he was drunk to yeah. me, he was drunk. He played it very well. It's nice because he almost sobered up towards the end. As he, he kind of stopped drinking, he played that very well. Um, really nice use of space between the two of them when they're acting. It wasn't always very close. Like, it's a phenomenal like journey they go on. Yeah, the, I'm not sure how long it was. An hour and forty, an hour and fifty. It's a no, it's... long. They've got a lot to learn. Yeah, and the staging moves and is intricate. And it does, but very actually, natural. it was beautiful in its stillness. Sometimes, you know, there. Yeah. There were times yeah. when I was thinking if, if, if perhaps if you got hold of this you'd be wanting to give them business but there wasn't there were times where the business wasn't needed they were just playing the truth of the situation and there are moments where you know you do little and there are moments where you do lots and they were all pulled out really beautifully and the characterization in these two actresses and the way that they are clearly the trust that they have for one another in their actions and their reactions as you mentioned was a beautiful thing to, to view. Yeah, now I don't know what you think, but um, while it, I, I felt it was almost at times a little bit 
too long. Mm -hmm. I'll throw it out there. What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I, I did think there were some times where I, I was ex kind of expecting it to start wrapping up, and it didn't start wrapping up at the points where I felt like it should. So I was thinking, okay, we're, we're going to get to this point now where there's going to be a crescendo, and then it just felt a little bit laboured. I just wanted it to start crescendoing a little bit sooner than it did. Which is a really difficult thing because I did feel that as well but at the same time I was thinking what what could be removed because actually each moment is really delicately and intricately put together in its writing and its presentation. Um, oh, I you're did saying you're see... talking a load of rubbish then. You well, say, oh, I would have ended no, but I didn't audience, know where. I saw audience members getting fidgety. I was getting fidgety myself. It wasn't to say that I didn't care, but I think it's almost like quite a big ask of an audience. In terms of a plot, there is no intertwining plot. It's very, very much just two characters attracting and repelling and that's it. Yeah. So, and it's, it's just different angles of that. So there's nothing fresh in that. Um, but that's just what I thought. I just wanted to check whether it was just me. I thought the set was beautifully observed as well. Very realistic. Yeah, totally realistic. Great design work um, from. Says. From the from the set designer from Fly Davis. Fly Davis, what a name! Fly, yeah, Fly Davis, a great design work. Also, lovely lighting from a name that we've seen come up before, Jack yep. Knowles, who's He's also done, loads. done yeah, Barbershop Chronicles and Cleansed at the National. A lot of stuff at the National. Carolina Change at Chichester, which is about to transfer to the Hampstead. Um, lovely, subtle, and totally realistic lighting. Yeah, lighting was pretty much just one state. Mm. Um, the opening state before the actual show started, um, there some really nice picking up of certain elements on the stage that was very subtle but once it started um, it was pretty much just one state but it was very nice subtle and realistic yeah and Paul Arditi on the sound design um, I like the soundtrack there was um, party music playing before the show started so it gets you in the mood puts you in the right place and then great use of music and dance in the show itself um, you know that sort of awkward with the last yeah. two on the dance floor <laughs> How are we going to act with this? But that was beautifully done. A really nice moment. Yeah. It's, it's literally like five, six, seven minutes of just music and just taking it in turns to dance. And yet it was as if that is exactly what would have happened. It's kind of beautifully observed. And they're just really nice, beautifully observed moments throughout the piece. So I bet you're wondering how many legs we're going to give it. So for beginning here at the Ambassadors Theatre, we are going to give... Four legs! Yeah, a great evening out, something very timely, very current, and you know, as a 30 something, um, especially if you're living in London and you're dealing with the struggles of expectation and career and property ladder and the pitfalls of being a 30 year old ish in this country, I think you will find it totally relatable. Yeah. That's exactly it. It's a modern piece dealing with a modern adult relationship. Something I haven't seen, I don't think, in theatre. Just that vulnerability of adults now and, and how society and social media yeah. affects us and moulds us and makes us want things or the expectation of us and what we should want but actually as a human being what we want yeah, we want to fulfil those maternal instincts uh, sorry mater carry on materialism <laughs> isn't a new thing um, but it's sort of it's nice to know sometimes that you're not on your own and I think this piece will make a lot of people think good I'm glad someone feels like I feel that's what we thought. That's just what we thought. What do you think? Yeah, let us know. Leave us a comment. We'd love to hear from you. We're the Breaker Leggers, and we'll catch you again soon. Bye! Bye.